Yeah, we did some horse trading. 20, 23, 600 mile, 6 4 Hemi. Monster Lee, sorry, buddy. That's not all we're getting, though. We got we got room. Right, Mark? We got room. Got room. Got room. I don't know what we're getting, but we got room. <laughs> Sounds like we can get what we. Probably too much. <laughs> military trailer. Up front? Yeah. What about your, oh, he said your lawnmower might have been spoken for or taken already. <laughs> then your amphibious rig might have been gone. What? Couldn't talk him out of the, uh, Creek cab. Big dog. But we're going to go look at a different one just to go look at it because we can't. Oh, is that a Crown Vic on the trailer down there? Look at that. I'm going to give some background on the Monster Lee. I bought it from the gentleman that is driving the skid steer. And I had every plans to fulfill its destiny of making it a four-wheel drive Cummins monster generally. And, well, I have quite a few more projects on the roster, and I just wasn't ever getting around to it. I told him that I might be wanting to sell it, and he said he was interested in buying it back. But I uh, came up with a better plan. We decided uh, he'd get it back, and I'm going to trade him for the Hemi and this big old sweet truck. That's a collection you fed us this time, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Put it covered. Been right there, there, like a put it covered. Holy shit. Look at that one, Richard. Can't believe the wind didn't blow them off there. Oh, little bastards. Oh, look at this. The new one back there on the spring perch. Okay. Full harvest. You want to make some friends at the gas station, tell that kind of stuff. You guys saw it right. Monster Lee was traded off. Let me go into detail what we actually got because I didn't honestly ever plan on getting rid of that car. I was going to build it up the way it was supposed to be built, you know, with a Cummins in it. Now, it was a wild hair that somebody had, and we were going to finish the plan, but I just had to come to the realization I got two Chargers, I got two Challengers, I got a dozen truck projects at this point in time right now. So I thought it'd be nice to get rid of one of the heavier projects and that charger, the Monster Lee was a heavy project. So I did uh, mention it to my buddy that I bought it from that I, I might want to sell that car. And he said, well, I'd be interested in buying it back. I did like that car. And I said, really? And he's like, yeah. Well, we came up with the idea that we do some horse trading. He get the car back and I get some stuff to help me finish the projects. So we'll show you first things first. The big dog. What, what is this? I'll show you. So we were working on a trade deal for the last several months, trying to figure out what we we're going to do. We were aiming, I was aiming at one of his square body crew cab chevs. And uh, we we were close on one, but he ended up saying, nah, I kind of want to keep that rig. And no, I did not trade the RT69 Charger for this uh, dump truck wasn't just that i did get some other stuff but this was to even out the trade on his end because he felt like that bad boy back here wasn't quite enough i couldn't find anything besides this right quick so oh it's gonna kind of made him drunk 
did put a little bit of gas in the V500. See if she sparked to life. That's what we put that video. 318. A family, not LA. It looked big, but the distributor's still in the back. <laughs> Took me for a ride. I didn't know what was actually in it. You believe this D500 came with a slant six in it? A 19,000 pound GVW truck. What kind of guess they were still derating the bigger breeds back then just the same but don't really have a bunch of plans but somebody did a mild restoration on this truck and it's in actually pretty good shape so I just need to uh, replace the fuel lines get the brakes and the clutch working and add some boards to the bed anyway let me show you guys what we got going on in the shop we're going back to work on the swept line but first I got to show you we're gonna make a Hemi charger all right, folks, I got a bit of a confession to make to you guys throughout this whole YouTube journey. This is technically my second channel. I wanted to have a personal channel to do fun stuff with the family. Mopar Classics, I felt it was better suited for this thing. And I took a big hiatus from working on this truck over here because I realized my whole idea with this channel and the V-Belt and Sun channel is if I film what I enjoy, it's going to be fun no matter what, no matter what the views are. And pretty soon I started doing stuff just for the views and it just lost the buzz for me. So I took a big break from the swept line because that's a truck that really I want to get done for myself. And nothing's happened to it. Same thing with the Charger. These are things that I bought for myself to have fun. And I want to go back to that. So I'm going to try my best to have fun, go back to these rigs. For one, they are significantly more expensive than the other builds. I think with the V-Belt and Sun channel, uh, I've knocked out probably four to six, maybe seven trucks this year that were non-runners that I picked up to flip or to save. And uh, I've done those and been learning how to paint. So I can paint the truck, I can paint the charger. And this thing, I bought it all body work done, primer as it sits. It's got a 440 Magnum in it, 727. Uh, apparently some of that stuff, the engine wise, is supposed to have been rebuilt. The car's supposed to have been rebuilt. So I put... New brakes on the front so I could drive the car around, rewired underneath the hood so the engine actually fire up and run. Got good oil pressure, very peppy, but it wanted to smoke a lot. So I was like, man, we just need to let it run a little bit. It'd clean up on the smoke level enough that I was like, all right, I'm going to drive it. So I would start driving around the yard and just having fun. I wouldn't film none of it, just something I've always wanted to do. Dream car, second gen Dodge Charger. So discover that the rear end is shot. Pinion bearing, gone. Seals, gone. No oil. I was like, what the hell? Somebody just had the pan just kind of clipped on there. So I had that rebuilt. Normally I'd rebuild it myself, but I was out of town. I thought they were going to do it while I was out of town, but it took like three months. But they only charged 600 for label, 600 for parts. So I thought that was a pretty good deal, get the 60 rebuilt. And uh, at one point I thought, you know what? I'm just going to... Hemi swapped this thing with a modern rig. And I got a 14 Challenger that had been in a police chase. So I got a 5.7 Hemi, six speed manual transmission. And it turned out I liked the car more than I liked the idea of tearing it apart. So I ended up saving the car. It's one of my favorite cars to drive. And it turns out it's a one of 50 car, one of 57, 50, 60, one of, I think one of 63 with the shaker hood. So it's kind of a rare car, happy to have saved it. But my donor car was gone. So I was going back to this, I was like, you know what, that carbs junk, it's an ale brock, pretty sure. I'm going to go ahead and get a holly smacker for it. Got that on my 70 Challenger, that's going to be nice. I'll still have the big block 440, sound great, it'll be a little bit more dependable. But I still never really got back down off the shelf to put that on there. And I kind of wish I didn't order that sniper kit because I need to order a holly terminator now to run my 6.4 Hemi that's apparently had pretty much no miles on it and it's out of 2023. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'll show you a little bit about the car, but we're gonna start working on the swept line as soon as I'm done watching or filming this video today. We're going back to having some fun. This is a 6.4 Hemi Scat Pack. They, I believe it's a 485 horsepower factory, eight speed automatic trans, so you get the Holley Terminator and it'll run all this. It's just, It'll be a plug and play kind of a deal. And I'm so excited about that because I know it's not the most simple route to go to put that in there because that it'll fit, 
but I think we got to swap some stuff around. And uh, yeah, so I got a virtually good to go 440 that we're going to yank out of that. And we're going to put that 6.4 in there. Uh, horsepower wise, we're going to be gaining, gaining, just put it that way. We are gaining. Now I'm thinking about it. I wonder, yeah, the starter's still there. Everything is still there. We got the wire, the shifter. We got other stuff. We even came with the rear end out of the car. I got drive shafts. Got the whole nine. But this car was found in Montana. Mopar's 5150, if you guys follow him. He found it. It's originally a burnt orange car. In and out, and it had a white vinyl top. 318, Charger 500. 70 doesn't really mean much and it's been swapped to a 60 on the back i got cutouts exhaust is just kind of slapped in there because i didn't have a lift when i put that in so that'll probably most definitely get put in proper you know actually match when it comes down to it so my question to you guys if you're ever on you know hunt for kind of stuff like this and i was under the impression i would have to swap out the whole k member on the front which yeah that would be ideal but i'd kind of almost rather just leave that stuff in there budget wise because it's got new torsion bars it's got new disc brakes in the front and everything would just go back in there like it should and i don't have to do coil swap on the front <sighs> i'd like to really do that but i can already tell that the uh the oil pan will probably come into you know issue being that that one's you know back a little bit versus the other one that the pan is up all the way to the front but that is a long-winded what happened to my charger okay i traded one charger so i could finish another charger and i got a dump truck out of it too so that works out and we're gonna get started on these right now i'm gonna pull the bed out for the swept line and we're going to start working on that i have a couple little dents i probably should have done all of the high build primer and everything on the bed to learn how to do that but now that i painted uh three vehicles two vehicles one full vehicle one cab one bed yeah so technically two ish vehicles i've learned you know the prep work goes a long ways and the prep work before the bondo and the primer and all that stuff all the metal work uh, simple stuff that you can take out with a sander, you know, a little belt sander, just neat, neat, and then cover it up with a little mud. Makes life so much easier. So that's what we're going to get started on right now. Just got to get this big old hemi out of the way. And by the way, I believe once you put a holly on there, it's going to have even more horsepower. So I will have my hemi charger when all said and done. <sighs> It'll make it a lot more fun to drive, I'll tell you that much. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this build. And if you know anybody at Holly and would like to give me a shout out towards them, that would be awesome because I'd love to work with a company like that. See you guys in the next one. Later.